Welcome back to Brangy Today. I'm Martha Constantinidis and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. The City of Boston is recommending that people wear masks indoors again as COVID cases have spiked by 38.9% in the last week. The community positivity rate is now 10.1%. Commissioner of Public Health Dr. Bisola Ojikutu said in a statement that, quote, we are following our citywide trends closely and we suggest that everyone follow recommended precautions to reduce risk and based on current trends, it is essential that people protect themselves and others by wearing masks within indoor crowded settings, testing, isolating if they're sick and staying up to date with their vaccinations, which will reduce the risk of severe illness from COVID-19." End quote. According to health officials, the recent uptick in cases are primarily due to the emergence of the highly infectious BA5 variant. According to the CDC, the new BA5 Omicron COVID subvariant has become the dominant strain in the U.S., accounting for 65% of infections nationwide. In a statement, CDC officials said the country has the tools such as high quality masks and antiviral treatments to protect against infections as well as serious illnesses. Dr. Ashish Jha, coordinator of the White House COVID-19 response team, said in the briefing last week that, quote, vaccines remain our single most important tool to protect people against serious illness, hospitalizations and death. Staying up to date is essential as we see BA5 rise across the country, end quote. Americans who are 50 years and older or those 12 and older who are moderately or severely immunocompromised are now eligible for two booster shots, meaning they can receive up to four doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. Pfizer and Moderna are both working on a new vaccine formulation designed to target BA4 and BA5 Omicron subvariants. These are expected in October, and Ja said Tuesday that the Biden administration had already placed one order with Pfizer for 105 million doses. In addition, the CDC has approved a new vaccine by the company Novavax that will soon be hitting the states to help get people vaccinated against COVID-19. The state is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On Monday, newly released metrics show that over 96,000 molecular tests were conducted and 7,096 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of July 12, 165 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 46 are in the ICU. 31 new deaths were also reported in the last seven days. The town of Braintree also continues to monitor COVID data from the state. In the last week, the town hall hasn't reported any new positive cases. The town hall website currently shows a total of 10,665 positive cases since the start of the pandemic. There have been no new fatalities reported in three months, keeping Braintree's total deaths at 137. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more after the break. The COVID-19 vaccine doesn't contain the virus, so you can't get COVID from the shot. You may experience things like muscle aches, fever, or tiredness, but these are most likely signs that your body is building immunity to protect against the virus. Learn more. Welcome back. The Massachusetts Senate last week passed legislation authorizing more than $10 billion for statewide transportation infrastructure projects which include amendments from State Senator John Keenan to benefit projects and communities in his district. Keenan filed amendments to the bill, which included $1 million for the town of Braintree. The legislation also takes crucial steps to make the Commonwealth's transportation system more environmentally sustainable and resilient to climate change by investing in emission reduction. Low or no emission vehicles for regional transit authorities, climate at climate adaptions for Massachusetts roads, and multimodal transportation such as bike lanes alongside roads. If approved by the governor, these funds will be made available to each community for projects selected by municipal officials. Statewide, the legislation invests billions of dollars in improving and maintaining and modernizing the Commonwealth's bridges, roads, and other critical infrastructure, including sidewalks, curbs, parking spaces, and airport improvements. 
On Monday, as part of the state budget passed by the state legislature, Braintree is set to receive more than $19.3 million in Chapter 70 funding for its public schools and more than $6.6 .6 million in unrestricted general government aid. Money was also reserved for the following Braintree initiatives, $50,000 for the Braintree Community Partnership on Substance Use, $37,000 for mental health services in Braintree's public schools, $200,000 for the Braintree Police Department's Family Service Unit, $100,000 for equipment for Braintree Fire Department, $28,500 for Elder Affairs Programming and Services, and $100,000 for Parking and Traffic Improvements. Governor Charlie Baker has 10 days to sign the budget into law or send it back to the legislature for amendments. A parking lot expansion that was done last fall for the Department of Elder Affairs building has eliminated much of Penniman Park, leaving a playground, a basketball court, and a paved walking trail around the perimeter. Those in the neighborhood say they're upset by the loss of the only public open space in the area and have banded together to form the Penniman Park Neighborhood Association. About three dozen residents met with District 2 Town Councilor Joseph Reynolds at the park last week to question the need for the 58 new parking spaces at the Senior Center that they say aren't even being used. Sharmila Biswa, the town's Elder Affairs Director, said she had been, ask, or had been seeking to have the parking lot expanded for six years. She said when the original lot was full, some seniors were parking on busy Cleveland Avenue, on nearby side streets, and others were even parking on the park's grass. Mayor Kokora said in an interview that no additional work in the parking lot would be done until next spring, when money for related stormwater work becomes available. Kokora said, quote, we're going to see if we can enhance the playground, but the goal is to finish the parking lot project, end quote. Braintree Town Council approved Town Clerk James Casey's early voting schedule for the September 6th state primary election at its Tuesday night meeting. Braintree voters will now be able to cast their ballots in person from August 27th to September 2nd in the Cahill Auditorium of the Braintree Town Hall. For early voters, hours will be Saturday, August 27th and Sunday, August 28th from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. During the week between August 29th and September 2nd, early voting hours follow suit with the town hall's normal operating hours. Voters will be able to go to vote between 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Tuesday, or from 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Friday. For more information, visit BraintreeMA.gov. The Sunset Lake Concert Series are back in full swing, taking place every Tuesday night from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Lakes Thomas and Pamela Whaling Gazebo. The concerts, which are sponsored by Mayor Charles Kokoris and the Braintree Electric Light Department, so far have had Curse Fancy playing some Irish and folk music, Wolfpack with some popular pop rock and country covers, Gainesville Road with some fan favorite covers including Footloose which had the crowd break out and dance, and the Beatle tribute band Forever Fab just last Tuesday. The concert series is still going as next week on Tuesday July 26, Westwood Swing Band will be playing some tunes. If you missed this concert or want to watch again, you can find it on BCAM TV's public channel, Comcast Channel 9, and Verizon Channel 28. Or you can catch it on youtube.com slash BCAM TV. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Protect yourself from mosquito and tick bites. Use an EPA-approved repellent anytime you're outdoors. Spray it on your hands first, then spread it on your face, neck, arms, and legs. Learn more at mass.gov slash mosquitoes and ticks. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. A new $4.2 billion bill unanimously approved by the Massachusetts House last week is aiming to help you save some cash. The bill provides for economic relief rebates for Massachusetts taxpayers. 
This will award $250 for individual filers earning between $38,000 and $150,000, and $500 for married couples making between $38,000 and $150,000. The $500 million tax relief package includes raising the child tax credit from $180 to $310 per child and eliminating the cap of $360 for two or more children. It raises the rental deduction cap from $3,000 to $4,000 and ups the state tax threshold from $1 million to $2 million. The senior circuit breaker tax will also be increased from $750 to $1,755. The House bill would also let the Massachusetts Lottery sell some products online, with revenue going to early education funding. The bill is now headed to the Senate for their approval. Hearing Officer Jane Rothschild of the State Department of Environmental Protection said the department should reconsider the Chapter 91 Waters Way permit for the controversial natural gas compressor station in the Four River Basin and whether the project should have been allowed to be built there in the first place. Rothschild has agreed with opponents of the compressor station that the facility did not need to be built near the water or in that location. This decision comes months after Superior Court Judge Joseph Layton vacated the permit for the project and sent it back to the state for further review. The decision boils down to an interpretation of the word required. Layton ruled that regular regulators incorrectly accepted required to mean suitable rather than necessary, therefore allowing the siting of the compressor. Alice Arena of the Four River Residents Against the Compressor Station said residents were shocked that Rothschild agreed that the department got it wrong. Max Bergeron, a spokesperson for Enbridge, said the company is re reviewing Rothschild's recommendation decision, recommended decision and considering its next steps. <clears throat> A bridge in Weymouth is about to be named after Sergeant Michael Chesna. The Weymouth native and father of two died on July 15, 2018, when he was shot by a man running from police. Senator Patrick O'Connor and Representative James Murphy, both of Weymouth, filed a bill last year asking the state to name the new bridge on Route 18 that crosses the commuter rail tracks on Weymouth's Main Street after the fallen officer. The bridge would be named the Sergeant Michael C. Chesna First Responders Bridge. O'Connor said the request to name that bridge for Chesna came directly from his family, who wanted something that his children could point to, saying that, quote, they wanted something in honor of all first responders who do these very serious jobs day in and day out, sometimes with little or no recognition, end quote. The legislation will soon be on Governor Charlie Baker's desk for approval. The Bar Association of Norfolk County will be running free evening legal clinics as a service to the public. Attorneys experienced in all areas of the law will be available for a free one-on-one -on -one confidential consultation to those who have questions or concerns regarding a legal issue. The clinics will be held at the Quincy District Court and the Dedham District Court from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on select Tuesday evenings. The next upcoming clinic will be on August 9th at the Quincy District Court and October 4th at the Dedham District Court. For those who wish to telephone for a referral, the Bar Association will refer you to an experienced private attorney who specializes in your legal matter. Their referral service is a full fee paid service covering auto accidents, personal injury, estimates, wills, criminal, family law, and real estate, and much more. Once referred to an attorney, the first half hour consultation is only $25. For further information, you may contact the Bar Association of Norfolk County at 617-471-9693 or by emailing admin at Norfolk or by emailing admin at norfolkbarassn.org. You can also view their website at www.norfolkbarassn.org. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Mosquitoes are out. Protect yourself from mosquito bites and the illnesses they can cause, like Triple E and West Nile virus. When outdoors, use an EPA-approved repellent and wear protective clothing. Learn more at mass.gov slash mosquitoes and ticks. Welcome back to Braintree Today. 
Now, here are some new movie and binge-worthy show recommendations. First up is Lou, starring Maya Rudolph as Molly Novak, who, after divorcing her husband of 20 years, must figure out what to do with her $87 billion settlement. She decides to re-engage with her charitable foundation and reconnect, the, reconnect with the real world. As she does so, she begins finding herself along the way. You can watch season one of Loot on Apple TV. Next in entertainment, Thor Love and Thunder follows Thor who embarks on a journey in search of inner peace. However, his retirement gets interrupted when Gore, the God Butcher, a galactic killer, seeks the extinction of the gods. In order to combat the threat, Thor enlists the help of others, including an ex-girlfriend who, to his surprise, inexplicably wields his magical hammer. Together, they set out on a harrowing cosmic adventure to uncover the mystery of the God Butcher's, God Butcher's vengeance. You can watch Thor Love and Thunder in theaters now. And finally, after nearly two years, the Umbrella Academy finally released Season 3 on Netflix. At the end of the Umbrella Academy Season 2, the Hargreaves family returned to their original timeline that they left in Season 1 only to learn that their actions in 1960s Dallas meant that Reginald Hargreaves decided not to adopt them. Luther, Diego, Allison, Klaus, Five, and Victor learn that they have been replaced by a new group of superheroes who are part of the Sparrow Academy. The Sparrow Academy, like the Umbrellas, consists of seven superheroes, including their late sibling Ben, who is now alive and part of the Sparrow Academy, though he is quite different to the brother they knew and loved. Season 3 will see the characters not only deal with each other, but also a phenomenon known as the Kugelblitz, which starts destroying things in the universe by sucking things into a makeshift black hole. Season 3 consists of 10 episodes in total, and these will all be available to watch on Netflix. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.